Forget what you knew about schools, no more structured row seating, fluorescent lighting, or hard plastics and steel. We try to use natural environment, uh, natural materials. We're trying to um, encourage, well, first of all, just being environmentally friendly, but also to use materials that children would find in nature and in any environment. So they're, they're using things like wood or um, plants and animals because those are real things, and we want our children to be exposed to real things. Not only is the school being designed for better learning, IF Cox held an in-service day called Everyone Learning Together, where teachers can get some valuable pointers. This year we are part of a pilot project by, uh, through the Alberta government and it's called the Capacity Building Project and it's, um, they have three schools here in southern Alberta that are involved in this project and we have a team of therapists, an occupational therapist, a speech therapist, um, um, occupational th physical therapist and we have a be behavior consultant and they've been working in our school trying to provide supports for our teachers to make sure our learning environments are inclusive for all children. A local occupational therapist says that these new designs in the classroom can only make learning easier for children. There's that interest, right? Everything is kind of new, it's exciting, what can we look at, what can we do? The kids who really need those tools are going to use them. The kids that don't really need those tools, in the end, they're not going to be end up using them, but everyone in the classroom will benefit from these strategies. Isaac says that every child learns differently and possesses individual budding personalities which can present a challenge. Sometimes kids are too high. It's like they're up here, they're all, all over the place, and we need to help them be at a just right state for learning. Sometimes kids are too low, and these are the ones that are sometimes hard to see, right? You know, sometimes they're the ones that are just kind of zoned out. It's like they're not paying attention or something like that. They're just as ineffective being down there as the kids who are high and all over the place are. It's a trial and error whatever works good for the kids. Um, some kids you can try one thing and um, it might be that actually just the use of a rocking chair works better for them because their body needs to have that movement. Three points to remember while readying a child's brain for learning is one, movement, which is them sitting in a rocking chair on a bouncy ball. Two are these fidgets, which is a small object that'll entertain the child's hands while learning. And the third one is heavy work, which is incorporating all the muscles and ready the body for learning as well. Some of the other strategies discussed at the in-service were seating positions and movement breaks, smart board routines and visual aids, self-awareness and self-regulation. They even unveiled a new desk which allows a child's feet to swing to appease that movement need for fidgety kids. Blair Balstravich, Chat News.